Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is going to be an ad hoc video on using grouping as sort of a layering tool and an organizing tool. I found it's a very useful uh, feature of FreeCAD, but it probably gets it probably doesn't get the credit it deserves. What I'm working with here is a shed. This is uh, so this is using an American style stick frame construction, and that's why you're going to see uh, feet and inches in the measurements. Uh, but you know it's a basic construction. This isn't complete. And I was just doing this to try to, um, you know, hone certain skills in FreeCAD like draft snap, and uh, and just you know understand better organizational uh, tools like groups. So basically, the way the groups work is you can put objects in groups. So this is in. Um, I'm not sure if this is draft is specific to draft. I don't think it's specific to draft. I think it came about in the draft uh, workbench, but it's not specific to it. So let's see if. Uh, Yes. So um, if you in the menu, it's under draft and you'll see it's um, utilities and uh, here's some group, you know, grouping tools here. There's auto group and I think there's create group is. Nope. Anyway, um, you can get to group here and let's see where else. Let's see if I can figure out where else. Sorry. Uh, tools. Nope. 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 So, OK. So it's not really a, doesn't seem to be a main feature of FreeCAD. You can also do it right within the interface here is just create a group that way. And that's my preferred method. And the reason why is um, it creates it within whatever object you have selected. Otherwise it just adds it to the end. So let's get, let's get into this a little bit. So first to show you the, the reality of, uh, of it being like a layer is, so I have all these roofing members are included in the roof group. So if I want to get those out of the way so I can see, I just uh, hide the roof group. Now, one of the things that uh, you have to keep in mind is there's some sort of thing where it doesn't hide at the first click. So I click it and I hit space. Um, I, I did, it proved me wrong there. So you can see I can hide it and bring it back with just space. It seems like when you first create the group, um, it doesn't it doesn't want to hide the members, but uh, they're in after it seems to work just fine. So you see it, it gives me a way to hide different uh, groupings of objects. So for example, say if I wanted to hide all the walls, I can just do that. And now I have sort of a, a top view of my floor floor plan with the flooring in place. Now let's, let's say I want to hide the subfloor so I can just see the joists. And there I have it. I have my just my subfloor, but without really much work at all. And um, the other thing you'll notice is, you know, I have dimensions laid in for this subfloor. Um, you know, one to show the initial spacing of this joist and whatnot. Those are within the group. So let, let me bring that, bring back the subfloor. Let me bring back the walls. Now, if I hide the whole floor, you see those dimensions went away. This one's not in the group yet. So to add that to the group or anything to the group, you simply drag it up to uh, up to the object. So now it's within the group, and you'll see when I hide it, it goes away. So the other thing I like about grouping is it allows me to select an entire group of objects fairly fairly uh, intuitively. Um, you know, the one straight, the, the first in, intuitive way is just selecting everything within the group. It's like that. Um, so, you know, that seems sort of basic, but it's, it's actually, you know, if you have a lot of objects that are named the same way, you know, it's hard to tell what's what, and it helps you just visually. The other way is through the functionality in the program, and that's through utilities and select group. So that selects the whole group. And the reason this is very useful is this allows me to move all of these items as a group with this, with the draft tool. And uh, so let's do that. So first I'm gonna select it. Actually, first let me do a working plane here. And in this current version, the working plane turns off whenever you select this, the, the actual grid. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. So I'm gonna select my whole group. Do select uh, utilities select group and if I continue to use this which I'm sure I will I'm gonna move this up to my uh, main workbench so now if I want to move this wall say um, say I want to widen this whole unit let's just first let's just move it out so I'm gonna pick the core I'm gonna pick the uh, end point of this let's see of, of that and did I get it and let's see I'm gonna only move it in the X so I'm just gonna hit X now oops so I don't quite understand I guess it's when I hit X, I expect it to move it on the X axis, but so let's just do it Y instead. So now the funny thing I notice is when you hit the character to 
move only in the axis. Sometimes it doesn't take and you have to hit it twice. So okay, so I've just um, I've just moved that out as a group. Now let me select it again. Utilities, select group, and I'm going to do a draft move. I'm going to select the endpoint that endpoint because I want to get it to this corner here. And this time I'm not going to select an axis. I'm just going to grab that endpoint. Let me grab this endpoint here. And there, I have my whole group move back in. So that's a really you know strong advantage of group. You can use it to really um, help organize a complex model. Now the uh, part object works similarly, but I've noticed that there's a bug with it um, in the draft mode, in, in the draft move. So let's let's create a part, and I'll show you what the current bug is. So now I have a part, and let's just copy my east wall here. So I'm going to copy all the objects. I hit copy and I'm going to try to paste it in. Now, um, let me open this. Nope. Yeah, I'm going to open it and try to paste it into that. But you see it. Oh, did it paste it into it? Nope. So um, I don't know how to get it to paste in. Let me try to paste it into the origin and see if that does the trick. Nope. So now I have double walls. Let me see if I can undo that. Yep. Okay. Um, let me move that to the part. So now I have the same thing as a part. Um, one of the things you can't do is you can't select there's no select if I double click the part nothing really happens the one advantage of as a part is you can just do the regular transform with the transform tool which I think is really super cool because you can move the whole part around um, but now let's show you how it doesn't work with the so now I have this part way out in space and it's not even you know it's completely misaligned so with the group tool I'd be able to easily easily bring that back into place let me hide my east wall here and let's try to bring that part back in so let's um so I could select individual parts let's first try to do it just by having the part selected so let's do but you'll notice it doesn't actually seem to select but watch when I do a draft move I can't pick the end but I can pick a point so I pick that point and you'll see it's got the whole thing could also copy this way too. Now, when I get to the other side, being as these aren't parts, it lets me pick an endpoint. Sort of. There we go. Yeah, and you see, I didn't get the point right there. So let's try that again, and let me see if I can get the get the very corner vertex. So we're gonna have the part selected. We're gonna do draft move. Let's see if I can just get a vertex there. I don't know. I think I got it. So you see that's a problem and I, I imagine that'll get fixed and once that get fixed I probably will revert to parts so yeah that got at that time so there's there's some bugginess in that part thing um, but the value of the transform is pretty high um, so if uh, they they make it so you can transform a group which I don't know if a group I don't think a group has a uh, has an axis assigned to it um, so that's probably so it doesn't have the placement object or placement class so you know you'd have to add a placement class to the group. So the part is probably works just like a group in code, but with the placement class. Um, if I knew how to, if I could run C C plus plus or Qt on my machine, I would try to debug that. But nope, no luck. So these red things, just in case you're wondering, are because I. So this um, this sill plate here is not supposed to penetrate these jack studs. It's just supposed to be uh, face. It's supposed to hit the face of these. So I made these red to remember to remember to change those uh, at some point. So this is not a finished model. I, I need a, a double plate up here. I'm just trying to make a sort of a perfect shed, and then I'm going to build it in my backyard. Um, but I wanted to do it in FreeCAD to learn some code and whatnot. Uh, so for example, here just as a bonus, um, you know what I did for this shed was I made a little macro. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it, it's just to count the um, shed list parts. There it is. So we do edit. I could just do run too, I guess. Um, and if I hit run, it should just, <laughs> I'm a liar, unknown exception. Yeah, so I, it, you know, it's, it's, oh, my, my I fixed it, but then it didn't get saved. Um, so basically, it just counts all the studs and rafters and whatnot when it works. But it's you know I'm just playing with that. So I'd like to make a parts list with my shed. Um, 
of everything I need to buy and how much it's going to cost. And, you know, this is just overkill for a backyard shed, but I just um, wanted to do it to learn and, you know, give fodder for videos and whatnot. So if you like this kind of video, I'm, it's a little more conversational, but it, I know it shows a, a feature I really like. You know, make sure you leave a comment. Let me know that you like it. If you don't like it, please let me know why. I, I really want to improve these videos, and I'd like that negative negative uh, feedback because uh, I can I can improve with that. I don't see it as a bad thing. I just see it as uh, you know negative criticism that helps you make something more positive. So uh, thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe and uh, have a great day.